Hey everyone, Jolt here. I quickly wanted to demonstrate to you four new features in Obsidian Xcolid Draw. I'd like to start with showing you Canvas Candy support, then we'll look at the new context menu actions, then we'll look at the PDF import options, and finally we'll look at the laser tool configurations. So let's dive in. To demonstrate Canvas Candy, I thought I would also show you the Mermaid to Xcolid Draw feature. So here, I created this flowchart that explains how the Canvas Candy support works. So let's first drop this drawing into our demo canvas. So I'm just going to simply drag and drop this item in here. And what you can see is, well, this doesn't look exactly great. It has a background color. It doesn't match the background of my canvas. So let's look at some things that we can do. So I'm going to head back to my drawing and I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to switch over to markdown view mode and here I'm going to be editing the front matter of this document. Now if you don't see the front matter then there can be two reasons for that. You might be seeing the properties so then here in the obsidian editor settings you have this set to visible and then you will see the properties in the document. In Xcolid Draw, I personally don't like the properties mode. So I will now demonstrate to you the features with source mode. But of course, you can do this with properties as well. It's just a little bit more difficult. So I recommend first practicing in source mode because then you can follow the way I'm doing it in the video. So first of all, I'm going to add Xcolid Draw export transparent here and I'm going to set export transparent to true. I'm going to come back here, close the demo canvas and open it again. Now you can see that this is not yet a perfect result because now the drawing is not visible. So I need to come back to my drawing. I'm going to switch to Xcolid Draw drawing and I'm just going to switch this to dark mode. Now we are getting somewhere because if now I come back to my canvas, then you can see that now I have my drawing, it's visible, but it has its border around it. So now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to add a Canvas Candy CSS class to this document. I'm going to write CSS classes and I'm going to just write CC for Canvas Candy and I'm going to write border none like this. I'm going to save this and then I come back here. I need to close the demo canvas and open the demo canvas again. You will see the magic that now I have the drawing right here, but it doesn't have the border around it. I think this just looks beautiful on the canvas. It's like a drawing that you've placed on the canvas right here. And if we look at the process itself, our processes, you need to get Canvas Candy, of course. I'll include a link in the video description. Then you need to create an Xcolid Draw drawing. You need to switch to Markdown View Mode, as I just shown you. You need to turn on the properties if you don't see them, so you can do that in the Obsidian Editor settings. And then you need to add the Canvas Candy CSS class. Now, I have to say, most of the CSS classes have no effect on the drawing, but I think the border non CSS class is a super useful class and it makes your drawings much more immersive on your canvas. And then all you need to do is to celebrate. So that's about the Canvas Candy support. Now looking at the new context menu action. So first of all, now you can insert any file or insert a link to a file simply by clicking here. So for example, if I want to insert how to read a paragraph, the link to the PDF file, then I can just simply insert it here. Or if I have an object and I want to add a link to this object, again, I can right click and I can add insert link to file. And here I can add my link, for example, to the Visual PKM logo. 
and now that link was added and you can see the image right here. Similarly, and this is more interesting for mobile use cases, you can open a link by right-clicking or long-clicking on an item and choosing to open the link. This is especially good when you have embedded Excolitrol drawings that you want to navigate to. Now it is easy also on a mobile because you can just simply open a link. And finally, if you have text, for example, in this case, I have these text boxes right here. I'm going to place this here. Now, if I'm brainstorming on my Excolitrol canvas, I might want to convert some of these into embedded markdown files and continue my brainstorming there. So imagine that in this case, I have a couple of bullet points, so bullet one, bullet two, etc. So I have this piece of text and I want to convert this into its own markdown document. Now you can do it because you now right click on this element and you can just simply select convert to file. And when you do this, I'm going to give this a file name. So this is file name. I'm going to press enter. And with this, the document was added and I can now resize it. So it will get the size of the original object. And from now on, this is a separate markdown file that you can continue to edit here in Excolidraw. So that's about the new context menu actions. Now let me clear everything here and show you the new PDF import features. So if I choose insert any file, now I can choose it from here as well. If I choose insert any file, I'm going to choose how to read a paragraph to demonstrate the feature to you. I want to import this as a PDF. I want to import pages one through 15. Now there are two things that you can do when importing. First of all, you can set if the import should go from left to right and then go in rows or if it should go top to bottom in columns. So let me show you first, I'm going to import this left to right in three columns. So this is how the pages will go. Then I click import PDF, the import PDF runs and you will see, let me just switch over to light mode so we can see the text better. You can see that the pages were imported like this. Now also what you can see, but I didn't show you yet, is now the elements are grouped together, but let me show you the other way of importing as well. So I'm going to place this to the side and now I'm going to choose insert any file, how to read a paragraph, and I'm going to import this as a PDF. Again, I'm importing pages one through 15. Now I'm going to turn off group elements and I'm going to switch to top down. So now this is going to create three rows and the rows will be as long as required. So you can imagine you will see what you see here, but transposed. And when I click import PDF, then the pages are going to be imported like this. And of course it looks different because the geometry of the pages are different, but you can see that here I have three rows and the text actually goes like this. So you read top down and this is how the pages go. So you can see based on the empty pages, how they come after one another. And also what I want to show you is now the elements are not grouped, but one by one. Why is grouping important? Well, let me just show you the final demonstration. So I'm going to actually delete these two. I'm going to once more import how to read a paragraph. Again, I'm, now I'm just going to import pages one through 10. And I'm going to click here to lock pages after import, but I'm not going to group the pages. So when I do this, locking the pages has the benefit that I can easily write over this and I cannot select 
the item so they are logged to the background this is super useful but now I need to unlock elements one by one which can be pretty tedious if you want to move the pages around and this is why it's great to import how to read a paragraph again pages 1 through 10 but this time I'm going to group the elements and I'm going to import it like this again the end result is this is locked but now I can unlock all of the elements with a single click instead of the previous case where I unlocked two pages but the rest I haven't so that's the difference between the two approaches so just in a nutshell the new features here are a that you can now group or not group elements as you import them and you can choose whether you want to go top down so you want to import in columns or you want to import in rows and the final feature i want to show you is how you can configure the laser pointer so you can see that my laser pointer now is this yellow color if you come to Excolidro plugin settings and you look under appearance and behavior you will find the laser pointer here and you can set what color you want your laser pointer to be so you can go back to this red and also you can create a longer delay how the laser pointer disappears as well as a longer decay length so if i increase these two then what you will see is as i draw the line will disappear much slower so you can see that it disappears but it disappears slower so if you want to mark multiple items on a drawing and you want to explain like this then this gives you more freedom to do this and of course with the length and with the delay time you can configure this to fit your needs so those were the four elements i wanted to show you i hope you find them useful and i hope to see you next time thank you